And please read the notices so you can pray for what's on there that needs our prayers through the week. Just one little thing. Can we please pray for Joe Rooney? Joe Rooney is very, very poorly at the moment. So if we pray for Joe, Mary, Catherine and Bridget and keep them in our prayers for the following week. Now I'm going to share a prayer with you this morning which has come from the Methodist Prayer Handbook. Shall we pray? Loving and gracious God, you are ever present with us, always walking beside us no matter what we face. You are a God of the past, the present and the future, always in changing in a world that is constantly changing. Help us to continue to put our trust in you, to step out with confidence and follow you wherever you may lead us. May we always remember that no matter who we are, you will always welcome us with open arms. Enable us to share your love, forgiveness, grace and acceptance with others that they too may come to know you and grow closer to you. Amen. So welcome to Deb and Tim. So good morning. Now, I wonder if anybody that's here this morning was at Messy Church. Was anybody at Messy Church? Oh, there's a few. Now, I wonder if anybody can remember what the story was about at Messy Church this time. Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus. So, today's service is also about Blind Bartimaeus. So, you've got a head start now on everybody else. So, you already know the story. So let's pray. Lord, look at us. Each of us is unique and loved by you. Open our eyes to explore your world. Amen. So we're going to start with our first hymn, Amazing Grace. Let us pray. All seeing God, you are so far beyond our understanding, yet you want to meet with us. You call us into your presence as the crowd called the blind man to come to Jesus. 
We come to you now, mighty Lord, gathered expectantly, ready to worship and learn from you. May we have eyes open to see you and hearts willing to be seen by you. Amen. And we now hear our psalm, so Psalm 126. Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. Amen. So that psalm is a harvest song of praise. It reminds us that the harvest is not simply the work of human hands, but is a gift from God. It speaks of patience being rewarded and celebration. So I wonder if you've ever felt that the work you do isn't really important and that maybe people don't see you, people think you're invisible. How does that make us feel? Do you ever feel invisible that people don't see you? Yeah? I think we've all felt like that sometimes. And do we sometimes see people by their status and by what they can do and how they can help us? So in today's reading that we'll have later, Bartimaeus had heard others talking about Jesus, about Jesus healing the sick, but he hadn't seen or heard Jesus himself. Bartimaeus was blind, but to many, he was probably invisible. Sometimes if we see the same thing over and over, it becomes invisible to us. We just don't notice it. So how do we make sure that we see the needs and the opportunities around us. Have we sometimes become blind? So we're now going to have, Tim's going to lead us in our next hymn, Everyone Needs Compassion. Thank you, Tim. Everything 
I believe in Now I surrender Savior, He can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever, author of salvation He rose and conquered the grave conquered the grave shine the light and let the whole world see receiving all the glory of the risen King Jesus shine your light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen King Savior he can move the my God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Oh, Jesus conquered the grave, Savior. Oh, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty. gospel reading from Hebrews. Thank you, Steve. Hebrews chapter 7, beginning to read at verse 23. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who are weak, but the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. Amen. We now come to our prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God of action and interaction. You see and want to be seen by us. We thank you for the amazing sights you have for us. If we are prepared to call on you, we thank you that you are a God of healing and whichever way you choose to act is always best. We thank you, Lord. Amen. And we're now singing our next hymn, 446, I Will Offer Up My Life.
So we're now going to watch a short clip of the story of blind Bartimaeus. That's okay. So it's just a short story clip of Blind Bartimaeus and how, how Jesus came, came to Bartimaeus and, and healed him. But we'll, we'll have the reading after, I think. Pauline's going to read the reading after, so we'll, we'll hear the story then. So we'll come to our prayer of intercession. So when I say, give us eyes to see their need, if you can respond with, give us love to respond. So give us eyes to see their need, give us love to respond. In our world where people go hungry because the price of food has risen and their income has not, give us eyes to see their need, give us love to respond. As the nation recovers from the shock of the stabbing of David Amos and concerns are raised about the safety of MPs and others and the government needs wisdom, give us eyes to see their need, give us love to respond. As the church tries to work out its mission in the world and the community, when there are so many demands upon both time and resources, give us eyes to see their need. Give us love to respond. Where refugees are housed and asylum seekers take sanctuary, where there are strangers in our midst, give us love to see their need. Give us love to respond. As the time for COP26 approaches and governments prepare their response, while individuals express their concerns for the future of our planet, give us eyes to see their need. Give us love to respond. When people are sick at home or in hospital, where people are shielding or isolating and feel alone and unloved, give us eyes to see their need. Give us love to respond. For those who grieve for loved ones who have died recently or for whom it's an anniversary or when the pain just seems to never get any less, give us eyes to see their need. Give us love to respond. When there are disabilities of sight, hearing or mobility, when people have disabilities or conditions that are not obviously visible, give us eyes to see their need. Give us love to respond. In a world of need, help us to see those needs. In a world of suffering, may love be shared. In a world where many lose faith, May hope in Christ prevail. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
So we're now going to sing hymn number 404, God's Spirit is in my heart. now going to come and read to us our gospel reading from Mark's gospel. Thank you, Pauline. Mark 10, starting at verse 46, blind Bartimaeus receives his sight. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. 
When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Amen. Thank you, Pauline. So we're now going to come to our prayer of confession. So at the end of every line, if you can repeat, Son of David, have mercy on us. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for the times we don't hear Jesus calling us. Son of David, have mercy on us. The blind man was direct in his request. Forgive us for the times we go all round the houses and times we just can't see what is right in front of us. Son of David, have mercy on us. The blind man had good friends. Forgive us when we don't accept help from friends and when we aren't good friends to each other. Son of David, have mercy on us. Forgive us for ignoring people who, are re who really need our attention and for not seeing that we can help through you and you can help through us. Son of David, have mercy on us. Forgive us when our faith is small and we don't believe that it, it can heal us. Son of David, have mercy on us. Amen. So today I'm going to read a story and see what you think of this story. A young man is playing the violin outside a tube station. People are rushing by, they've got places to go, trains to catch. An hour or so passes when our two people stop and listen for a short time. Then a young girl stops and listens intently for a while. But her parents soon pull her away. She's reluctant and looks back as they go on their way. In the player's hat are a few small coins. These, by the way, are true events. The previous night, the same virtuoso violinist had played to a packed audience at a London venue, using a priceless Stradivarius. Every member of the audience had paid at least £50 for a seat, many much more. The music, however, was the same. It had been the desire of this young player to bring his music to everyone, with no barriers or restrictions. But many of those passing by just saw a young busker playing for his tea. In another place and another time, the road is busy and there's a blind man sitting beside it. It's a unique moment, though the blind man does not know it yet. He recognises a passing rabbi and with an uncanny, you might say, God-given moment of insight, he understands who this rabbi truly is. There is little time. The man does the only thing he can. He calls out in faith. The rabbi hears him and asks to see the man. Now it seems as if there is all the time in the world. What do you want me to do for you? A moment of stillness. Everyone is waiting, watching, not knowing that the answer will change not only the blind man, but the whole community. My teacher, let me see again. 
Jesus' heart must have sung as he restored the sight to the man and restored him to his rightful place in the community with a new purpose. And Bartimaeus makes his decision. Immediately, he follows Jesus. So, do we have time in our lives for such moments? Would we have stopped and listened to that violinist? Or are we always no time to stop and stare? No time to see with God's eyes and wonder? No time to listen as Jesus did for the heartfelt cry? Remember that little girl at the station? Did she take away from that brief moment a desire to play the violin? If so, did she pursue that calling? Who knows? But vocations are made in such brief and unique moments. If only we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and faith to respond. Do so. Respond, that is, and you may have just changed someone's life. So we're now going to have our next hymn. Tim's going to lead us in number 406. Have you heard the good news? today and he said what can I do for you what would your response be would you have a response so let's pray 
Lord, may we look out into your world with your eyes, listen with your ears, and speak and love in your name. Amen. Thanks be to God. Did we do that last? Do the last thing. song again. So. <laughs> There is a way when they see 